Actress and model Andrea Kevichusa from Nagaland has been making waves in the country the past few years with big brands and names not just nationally but internationally roping her in for their projects and work. From Sabya Sachi Mukherjee and Piaf as well as for Katrina Kev's beauty line K-Beauty, they're just a few names. The 21-year-old has made a huge splash this year, yet again starring as a boxer in upcoming Bollywood movie, Anek, alongside Ayushman Khurana. A directorial venture of Anubhav Sinha, Anek is a socio-political thriller set in northeast of India and is set to hit theatres on May 27th. Amy. <laughs> Very recently, several actors from Bollywood, including Tapsi Pannu, Kriti Sanan, Aditi Rao Haidari, Nina Gupta, amongst others, announced Andrea's debut in Bollywood with welcoming posts on social media. The actor will also be seen gracing the very popular The Kapil Sharma show with her co-star Ayushman Khurana and director Anubhav Sinha on May 21st. Bringing laurels to the state and making us proud, Hornbill TV is happy to have the beautiful Andrea today. Hi Andrea, first of all, congratulations on your Bollywood debut alongside one of the biggest names in this industry. How are you feeling at this moment? Hi Esther, thank you for having me today. Sure. Um, this is my first time, so I don't really know what to expect. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been a great journey so far and it's still going very well. So just hoping for the best. All right. So, I mean, coming back to just the basic question right now, have you ever acted before apart from the ads or, you know, promos that you've done? I mean, were you always interested in acting? This is actually my first acting gig. Um, I never really acted in anything before because I wasn't, I didn't have any aspirations to be an actor. And... Yeah, I mean, it just kind of happened with a stroke of luck, I would say. But, yeah, um, I mean, I hope this kind of opens up more doors, hopefully, for the future. So, you're saying you've never really, uh, uh, have you taken acting classes or have you done any, you know, of that uh, professional training in acting? Uh, I had to take acting classes after I got cast for this role okay. to kind of like hone the skill. But besides that, not really, no. All right. Um, what's your background like? I mean, give us a look into Andrea's past in terms of education, you know, when you started modeling and all. Uh, I was born in Kohima and I grew up in Kohima. Um, I went to a little Paris Singh school. I think everyone knows that school. Um, I had a fairly normal childhood, I would say, and it was quite monotonous also. So modeling also it just happened by chance um i was scouted when i was 15 by my mother agency oh okay and i was still in school so um i you know i started i signed with them when i was 16 and i had to travel quite a bit from shillong to M mumbai because um you know i was still doing it part-time mm -hmm. and yeah i mean it kind of went off there it, it was going well so i decided to maybe uh, I get a start after my class 12 after I graduated high school and yeah, I mean that's how, that's how it went. I mean when you ventured to Mumbai at such a young age, you know, to model and it's such a, uh, you know, the, 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 the industry can be quite cruel and especially at such mm -hmm. a young age. How, how were you feeling that time? Were you, you know, a little apprehensive, a little afraid? Um, well, <laughs> when I was growing up, I always thought I would be a doctor, like I grew up with that dream, you know, since I was like six years old. But, um, you know, after I started, you know, like I kind of like dipped my foot in the water and, you know, I was like testing things out. It was going really well. So, that, you know, my parents and I, we were like all on the same page. It was like, okay, this is probably just a hobby. But because, you know, uh, doors were opening up for me, you know, we decided to give it a shot. I mean, even after I graduated high school, I was still pretty uh, apprehensive about it. But mm. yeah, I mean, you know, it's not every day that that, that you get opportunities like Correct. this. So right. yeah, that's that's why we and, kind of like and you grab the opportunity. That's. I mean, that's good, you know, you're, you'll be encouraging a lot of people to just go out and, you know, get 
get to where they want to be. And you know, can, can you tell us a little bit about your experience during the shoot of this film and how long was the shoot for? Um, I was cast in 2019 for uh, my role and we, I, immediately after I was cast I started working on my boxing and my acting and like I had, a, I had a lot of classes and I had to also work on my Hindi of course and but of course in 2020 you know the pandemic uh, began and that just kind of put a stop to all the classes I was taking and I was also back home but I think towards the end of 2020 we resumed like the pro project and like working on it and we shot from the beginning of Jan like the mid jan to mid march i would say oh. and obviously i was not like there for the entirety of the shoot but mm -hmm. yeah i was there like sporadically you know, in between just flying in and out mm -hmm. all right uh coming back to, again to the film i mean what were the highs and lows while filming anek can you just tell us a little bit of when you felt the best or was there any time you felt a little low you know or you, did you miss home doing this movie also since it's based on you know back home in the northeast especially um i would say you know because i was like we shot mostly in shillong and i i did study there so i felt pretty at home but um, I think the highs would probably be the fact that I finally delivered what I was working so hard mm -hmm. on. And right. um, yeah, I mean, the low, I, there isn't a particular incident, I think, but I think lows would be probably also taking like the mental stress and like everything, you know, because I was quite nervous when we first began mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I knew I would be debuting with people that are already so established and so good at what they do. And I was just like, really putting so much pressure on myself but yeah that, that was it so y you were saying earlier that uh, you know hopefully this will open a lot of doors so being uh, in anek now does this mean that andrea kevi chusa is going to shift to movies full time or is it going to be modeling itself i mean both uh, yeah i think both i definitely enjoy my modeling career and i would like to still concentrate on that as well as my studies but uh, so far, I think I'm just taking it like one day at a time and then we'll just see how it goes. I mean, if it's God's will, it, yeah, it yeah. works out. All right. Uh, and also, I mean, uh, can you tell us how the movie happened? Who, who, who approached you and uh, what were your thoughts when you were, you know, approached for this movie, Anek? Uh, um, I will begin by saying that I am quite ignorant. I was quite ignorant when it came to Bollywood or, you know, like, because I think back home, mostly we grow up consuming Western or, you know, like Korean uh, media, <laughs> but yeah, so I was quite unfamiliar with it. And um, I think after I moved to Bombay, um, mm -hmm. after a few months, my agent told me that I had a, a meeting for a role in a film and uh, <laughs> sorry, these yeah. things, they do happen quite often. So. Um, I assumed that it would be for a minor role mm -hmm. and I went to the meeting and I met the director Saran Bhaktina and they didn't tell me, they, they didn't give too too much of the movie away and they, but they just told me, you know, that they're working on a film and <coughs> it's the north northeastern region of India mm -hmm. and they, they wanted me to be the female lead. Mm -hmm. So, and also that they wanted me to be a boxer. So, I mean, it was like really over, overwhelming because, yeah, like I was like quite, um, Hesitant at first, I would say, because I didn't, I like, I wasn't ready. I knew that, you know, I was still 18 at the time, and I mm -hmm. knew that this would be a really big deal. Like, I, I, I didn't know if I was, like, ready to take that step. But, yeah, I mean, after much deliberation and after, you know, like, talking to my parents and, like, just consulting them, I mean, we decided, you know, like, I, looking at things from a bigger picture, I think it would be uh, good for me and like you know my life and also also um yeah just the enormity of the opportunity you know that was coming to me like i that's why you know i, I thought it would be a great space for me to go as a person and also you know to learn so many new skills all so, right yeah. and uh, you were talking about your parents uh, just now and uh were they really supportive and what was it like growing up uh, with you know with these dreams and all of that and were your parents you know telling you to go get it uh yeah i mean uh like i said i think we were all 
on the same page <laughs> when I also started modeling because we were just like, you know, I think this is just going to be part time and, um, you know, I'm, I'm still going to be a doctor and like everything. But slowly after, you know, they started seeing things and like they started seeing me on magazines and like everything. Everyone was just like so supportive. And, you know, in fact, when I got the role for the film, they were the ones, you know, told me, you know, you, ha you have to do this. You know, it's going to be great for you. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I think they're, they're very proud of me. So uh, coming back to family again, you have uh, you know all you have only sisters as siblings. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think there are five of you, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So tell me about growing up together in that household, and you know, do you guys have cat fights or sibling <laughs> rivalries going on? And you know, what's it like? Do you miss home? I grew up like fighting with my sisters every single day <laughs> before I went to school. Um, yeah, and then but then I think like growing up. They are literally my backbone, you know, in life. They like, without them, I like, they are the, I would say, the support system that I have. You know, like whenever yeah. I'm going through something bad or whenever I have, I'm like in a dilemma, they're always there, you know, to kind of work around it, like to help me through everything. So, yeah, but like growing up, the house, like, it wasn't, it wasn't a safe environment for visitors at all out there. All right. Uh, you know, uh, coming back to the film and your agents and, you know, everybody, how were you introduced to them, you know, uh, to them? I mean, uh, I think uh, Anima yeah, Creatives? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Yeah. So how did you get introduced to them? How did you get to them? Uh, I, uh, my, the directors of my agency, I think they saw a picture of mine when I was 15. That was when I was still in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, and they just... You know, they, I got a message from them on Instagram and, you know, of course, being from Kohima at that time, like, you don't really know what modeling agencies even are. I didn't really think too much into it. And, yeah, I just kind of left it at that. I, okay. of course, I had a brief conversation with them. Right. And soon after, um, you know, I, I did a lot of, I, I did a few jobs. And after that, they, you know, the directors of my agency, they were really kind you know, they were kind enough to fly all the way from Mumbai to mm -hmm. Kohima. And then, you know, they had a proper sit down with my parents and I, and they, they just gave us like a brief intro on how the modeling industry worked and mm. what it would be like if I signed on with them and, you know, mm -hmm. the whole process. And I think that was like really sweet and it just showed the dedication they had also mm. with, you know, the models that they sign on. And so after a few months, uh, we kind of, agreed to do it. Nice. Okay. And I uh, mean, coming back to Nagaland again, do you think that Nagaland should have a buzzing film industry? You know, is it high time that, you know, an industry should be present in the state, even if it's just a small one? I will say I believe that there is a lot of talent uh, mm -hmm. in Nagaland. Um, and we have, you know, the, being from Nagaland itself, it's such a Nagaland is such a beautiful and unique place and um, it would be really interesting to see stories and, you know, like uh, films, you know, be it like anything from our perspective, you know, towards, you know, the rest of the country or to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are a lot of good filmmakers and a lot of good actors back home and it would be great to see them, you know, come to light and, you know, let their talent be Correct. kind of into the rest of the industry. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talent here. And uh, like you were saying that it is high time also, you know, that uh, an industry is there or, you know, people should encourage each other more. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you say so over here? I mean, you know, we have a lot of people also that have tried hard. But do you think that now the youth needs to go get it for themselves or should they just for wait sure. for something to so. happen? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, you never really know until you try, you know, and you, you try and you might fail again, but at least you have the satisfaction of knowing that you tried, you know, like, and I think being, no matter what job you have, I think being passionate is the most important thing. Mm. So if you really try to follow your passion and you really try to get it, and you know, if it works out, then that's the best thing that could happen. And if it doesn't, you know, you'll at least know that you tried. Right, yeah. So I think that, you know, that's really... That's a big deal. Yeah, I think that's much more worth it. Uh, also, mm -hmm. how hard is it to become an actress in Bollywood? I mean, would you encourage the youth here in Naglin to be an actress apart from other entertainment and, and in the industry professions? Do you think is it really um, hard? 
I I do know that it's you know very rare that opportunities come to uh, mm-hmm. actors you know especially from the northeastern region you know in like the uh, I would say mainstream industry mm-hmm. but to be honest I am still a novice in this field so mm-hmm. I don't I, I I don't know if I would be able to speak on that but Correct. Uh, I would say you know in the modeling industry like in the past few uh, years the horizon for um, like inclusivity or you know just uh, diversity it's like really uh, broadened up you know the horizon Correct. is really broadened up and I think yeah. it's like a great space and I know that we have a lot of beautiful faces that back home mm-hmm. so I think just like everyone should just you know if, if they're interested of course you know I think they should like follow the heart and try. Okay, <laughs> nice. Uh, you know, and times are changing now. And I would say that, you know, discrimination towards the Northeast people is still there. There is a hint of it, though it's much better now. So yeah, yeah. did you feel that in the industry when you joined? Um, uh, like I said, you know, um, I, I don't know if I would say that because I, you know, started this, uh, in this industry as a model, it has been good to me and I've only worked with people that are like really professional and you know I've always had people to uh, you know to like have my back but mm-hmm. um, I think there is a lot of underrepresentation in the industry mm. and if there is any representation it's often misrepresented um, and I know that uh, quite often the actors are stereotyped into just like the same roles that have to do over and over again and I think that's um, unfair and um, yeah I mean you know I think that's why a film like Anik is important because it's you know uh, whenever we move away from our home state to anywhere you know mm-hmm. anywhere else in India I think racism is such a face reality that we have to experience and um, sometimes also I think that the perpetrators don't even realize that, mm, you know, that they are being racist. So yeah. I think, you know, some like I mean, it would be a great opportunity for people to educate and sensitize themselves, mm-hmm. you know, and just, yes. yeah, and I feel like that is why, you know, it is required to have a film of this magnitude or a film that is as commercial as I mean, you know, to reach to the masses, you know, or mm-hmm. like it's more accessible mm-hmm. to the general public. In yeah. the country yeah that's really true i mean uh, th- those are wise words coming from a 21 year old i, I would say <laughs> uh okay so on a lighter note who is your favorite actor and actress in bollywood hmm. <laughs> um i watched quite a few shahrukh khan films when i was growing up okay so i would have to say uh, shahrukh khan and i love piki Sinha. so yeah okay and what about hollywood who's your favorite Hollywood, hmm. <laughs> um, uh, there's, I, I recently watched a film called Licorice Pizza and it uh, was starring one of the girls from the Girl Band Heim. I don't know if you know. Okay, no. The Girl Band Heim. Yeah. yeah. So I really like her performance in oh, that film. Okay. Yeah. And just let's, getting, let's get to know Andrea a little bit more. What kind of music do you listen to? Who's your favorite band or artist? And Who's your favorite from Nagaland? Anybody? BTS. It's always on my favorite. BTS. Okay, so you're, you're <laughs> yeah, K-pop. Are, okay. Yep. And from Nagaland, uh, uh, musician. Yeah. And, uh, or any artist.